we help them? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this fifth Sunday of Easter. Our service begins on page 185 of the Book of Alternative Service. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with, with joy. joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you created humanity anew. May the power of his victorious cross transform those who turn in faith to him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Acts. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 22, 
beginning at the 24th verse. You'll find that on page 730. Again, Psalm 22, starting at verse 24, page 730. We'll say it responsibly by the half verse. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will, I will perform, perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May, May your hearts live forever. forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. If you're able, I would invite you now to stand for the proclamation of the gospel. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the vine and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you now in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Have a seat, folks. In our reading from the book of Acts this morning, we have two primary um, persons involved in the story. One, of course, is Philip, one of Jesus' disciples. And the other one is the unnamed uh, Ethiopian eunuch. We don't know his name. All we know, and it's very, very clear in here, and it's written, Luke writes it over and over and over again, eunuch, eunuch, eunuch. He really wants you to know that this guy's a eunuch, so there must be a reason for that. So, let's take a look at societal norms of the first century in Judea. Eunuchs were often created primarily, initially at least, for singing, because if their voice never changed, they would sound boyish for a much, much longer period of time, potentially forever. But the other reason one would create eunuchs is because they were useful and also at the same time not threatening. Royal households would often use eunuchs if they had to deal with the female um, portion of the, of the family, the queen, the princesses, those sort of things, because because this person's a eunuch, he is no threat. Because he's a eunuch, he cannot procreate, he cannot create his own dynasty. He is a safe person for us to use. So it was not uncommon 
for a eunuch to be in the position that this person was today. He is in charge of um, the queen of the Ethiopians of her entire treasury. So this is a man of great importance, a man who is probably quite well off himself because of course he's the treasurer of a queen, he's going to be well paid for that privilege. But he's also either a Jew or he's attracted to the Jewish faith because here he is far from home, not on a diplomatic mission, but on a spiritual, a religious journey. And he's been in Jerusalem. Now, it's interesting because the rules of the temple, the rules of the Jewish people at the time, would have forbade him to enter the temple because he was a eunuch. He is odd. He is unusual. He is not whole. He is not welcome to be in the temple. He can never fully participate in the Jewish faith. He can be in the outer courtyard, the courtyard of the Gentiles where Jesus did most of his teaching, but he can never ever go beyond that. He will never be a part of their faith. He just can't be. But at the same time, he's attracted to it. So here he is. He's in Jerusalem. We know he's, we know he's rich for a couple of reasons. First, he, again, he's the treasurer of a queen. He's going to be rich. But also, it appears that he has a scroll from Isaiah. Now, scrolls were not cheap. So the only people who tended to have scrolls, their own personal scrolls, were people who were well off. Now, did he get that scroll when he was in Jerusalem? Did he have it before? Doesn't matter. But because he can't fully enter into the Jewish faith, his instruction obviously is lacking because he is traveling down the road in his chariot, again, a sign of wealth and power, and he's reading from the scroll, the scroll of Isaiah. Philip, who has been sent this direction by an angel, sees him and sees what he's doing. And therefore, Philip has to run, because again, it's a chariot, he's not going slow. He has to run, catch up, jump on the chariot, and engage the eunuch in, you know, what are you doing? You're, you're reading Isaiah, do you understand this? No, I don't. How could I? Philip is a Jew. Philip would know immediately, yeah, you can't. You can't participate in the Jewish understanding of things. However, let me help you. So Philip then opens up the scripture to him, starting with Isaiah, starting with the, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before a shearer, so he does not open his mouth in his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can ascribe his... Who can describe his generation, for his life is taken away from the earth? Now, as a Christian, when we read that, we can, we can sort of fill in the blanks so we know who it is that we believe Isaiah is talking about. The eunuch would have had no idea. Because his question is, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? That's a legitimate question, right? So, again, Philip opens up the scripture to him. And as they're doing this, now remember, this is a fairly deserty type place that they're riding through. As Philip is explaining all this to him, lo and behold, they've now come across water. That doesn't normally happen, but they've come across water. And the eunuch says, hey, what would prevent me from being baptized? Now, I don't believe that that's a rhetorical question. I believe he's serious. Like, I can't go into the temple in Jerusalem. I'm not allowed in there. Is there something that would prevent me from being baptized? And Philip, of course, no, nothing. Let's go do it. So down to the water they go. The eunuch is baptized, and Philip is spirited away to another place. The eunuch then will continue on to... Ethiopia returning to his home, but now with a new understanding. We don't know what happens to him anymore. We never hear about him again. But what has happened is that the scriptures were open to him and he received the gift of baptism. He is now 
one of them, them being the Christians. <laughs> he is not the same race as Philip. The fact that he's an Ethiopian, he's, he's not a Jew, he's not, or probably not a Jew. Um, all of these things, which were really important a few minutes ago, where barriers and things that would prevent him from being a part of a community have now been erased. Because in our understanding, that's how God operates. He doesn't care about what color you are, what nationality you are, what sex or what orientation you are. None of that matters because it's not important. What is important? Well, our gospel reading today. Uh, I should have. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. That's the only thing that matters. Are you abiding in Jesus? Are you a follower of Jesus? Are you trying to do the things that Jesus has commanded each of us to do? Because if you are doing those things, you can have full membership in our club. There is no test. There is no, do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? Do you believe in the other thing? At least in the Anglican Church. We don't have a, a set of doctrines that you have to ascribe to and say, I believe these things. Okay, you can come in. You don't have to do anything like that. All you have to do is use this. That makes you one of us. Don't care what color your skin is. Don't care how old or how young you are, how rich or how poor you are, male, female, non-binary. None of that stuff matters because we follow Jesus. We abide in Jesus and Jesus will abide in us. We will be part of the family. And that is critically important because for many years, we know that that wasn't always the case in our tradition, was it? You had to be a certain type of person in order to be in a cathedral. You had to be a certain type of person in order to be in another parish. You had to have certain things about you that would make you acceptable. Now you could hang around if you didn't meet those things and people would usually tolerate you. <laughs> But you would never really feel, in my understanding and my experience, you would never really feel that you were truly a part of it. Philip, with that, you with that. Um, I lost the word. I've already said uh, eunuch. There it is. Philip, with that eunuch, demonstrates that all of the old rules of who's in and who's out do not apply in Christ's world. Abide in him, and he will abide in you. That's it. Amen. Amen. I would invite you now to turn to page 188 in your prayer book, and if you're able, to stand with me as we proclaim our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God to the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I would invite you now to adopt an attitude of prayer most comfortable for you. I'm using uh, the Easter Litany on page 122 this morning. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory, that the risen Savior may fill us with joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that by his power wars and famine may cease throughout the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord of glory, glory, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that he may be comforted, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that, he, that they may bear fruitful witness of his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. On page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. And now we greet one another with that peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace everybody at home. Peace. 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 I wait for peace. Yes. Peace. Yes. And peace. Peace be on. Peace. And peace be on. Peace to you, Doctor. Peace. Oh, yes. Oh, you got long arms. I don't know you would take your long arm man. The long arm of the other priest.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you show us your way and give us your divine life. May everything we do be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is his kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Fraction sentence number eight. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. My sisters and brothers, the gifts of God for the people of God. And I see the God. God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The bread. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. Amen.
the blood of Christ shed this for you. is the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ, Amen. the bread of heaven. Amen. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, in this Eucharist we have heard your truth and shared your life. May we always walk in your way, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, my sisters and brothers, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. 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 Now that our service is ended, let us go forth in love to serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.